Chase Yaki, Blue Futon. I'm going to do two different videos now. One is the most underrated movies of 2019, and one is the most overrated movies of 2019. So what is considered underrated and overrated? Well, overrated is something that's fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, so 60% or higher. So I think shouldn't be that high on the meter, or maybe should be rotten, and basically vice versa. Underrated are the rotten ones. That should be positive, in my opinion. Just they should be better, vice versa, than you know a 30%. Maybe it should be a 55%. And then for the overrated, one that's at 93%, maybe should be in the 60s. But let's start with the most overrated movies of 2019. Number 10. I'm shocked I'm putting number 10 on this list, guys. I'm going with Honey Boy. I watched it. I still don't know if I can get my grasp on if I enjoyed what I watched on the screen. Yeah, it's a different movie. It's unique. It's supposed to be his life story of child acting and how his father treated him. But something about the decisions made in the movie of the whole the shy girl and other things, just it didn't click with me. I wasn't a fan of what they did with some of the movie. I was expecting this to be like a phenomenal movie. Like Lucas Hedges did great. Shia LaBeouf did great. But like the Martin Starr character went nowhere. The Shy Girl character just felt a little too awkward for me. But yeah, Honey Boy was really high on the critics. I don't know what it is for user score yet. But to me, it's a little high to call it four stars, thrilling, and everything like that. Number nine. We're going with the horror movie. We're going with Ready or Not. This is like at an 88% positive Rotten Tomato. And it's not one of those horror movies where I was expecting something different. And I, I was expecting something like a You're Next. And this was just weird. A weird demonic movie about you have to kill her before midnight or we all blow up because the deal of the devil and so it's a game of hide and seek red you're not it's a pretty simple premise but no stop jump cut anyway yeah but red you're not i was expecting a fun time and i just came out going eh. number eight we're going with the documentary mike wallace is here i was expecting like a unique hip crazy introduction of like how 60 minutes started how mike wallace rejuvenated his career of what he's done and everything he's done to actually make news what it is today but i came out with the filmmaking being a little political it, this movie did not need to be political at all it decided to be political for a documentary uh mike wallace came off as a pompous ass in the movie uh yeah so this is a documentary that's got like at the high 90s no nah. Not a fan of this one at all. Number seven, we are going with Terminator Dark Fate. While this is with the critics, I want to say it's in the mid-70s, user reviews in the 80s. I think this was a huge letdown, huge disappointment to the lore of Terminator. I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, since it's been out, it's going to be on DVD soon. Killing John Connor, making the original T-800 Arnold Schwarzenegger's character have a soul. They just basically switched the lore up so much. They made the new chosen one just completely ridiculous. Made no sense of how all of a sudden Wendell Hamilton or Sarah Connor just had to be like, act like a Terminator. Murder your family. And she knows how to fucking shoot a gun at it everywhere. Now like, pew, 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 pew. It's like, I don't know, overrated. I mean, yeah, the beginning action set piece on the bridge was pretty sweet in Mexico, but then it just went downhill with way too much CGI. A more of an action romp than I guess sci-fi horror movie like the original two more was in lines of and they got rid of Skynet Skynet doesn't exist anymore so come on what are we doing now number six I'm going with the July movie that some people consider a horror movie Midsommar oof oof ah uh, uh. I'm not the only one I know this is a very very decisive movie of if people really like it or it's like a eh I think with critics is that like high 70s, low 80s. But man, this, I was expecting something different. When I went to the like graphic nudity, the pushing sex scene, the imagery of like the art going through the form, you're like, oh, what are we putting in that pie? What are we putting in that pastry? Oh, we're putting that in the pastry. Oh, okay. And then the bear costume and then jumping off cliffs. I don't know. I was expecting something different. Camera work was great in this movie. I enjoyed how they did that. I enjoyed the colors. But the whole end of the movie didn't make sense. I didn't like it. And I don't like the message of... Like it started off so strong with the suicide scene. But then the message of this town is going to agree with her because they understand her pain. I don't believe in that message at all. This is another one of those movies where I met people who absolutely love this movie. I met people who absolutely hate this movie. 
I'm more on the hate side. It's very overrated. Number five, we're going with another kind of indie movie, The Lighthouse. Ah, this is one that I wasn't fan of The Witch, so I put it out there. And so I went in The Lighthouse because I liked William Defoe. I like Robert Pattinson, and I like how they were filming this movie. Like in the 1930s, old lenses, old aspect ratio. Let's do it. It just turned weird. Weird made no sense. I mean, I want to say like, getting into like YouTube wars, but you know, just dis discussing what these are. And there's like saying, oh, the White House is actually heaven. William Defoe is the gatekeeper of heaven. Robert Pattinson, he's been killing people in the past from his past job. And because of that, he can't see the light of the White House. It's like, that's way too metaphorically for me. There's octopus tentacles everywhere. There's having sex with mermaids in here. Imagery, that's just really awkward. I'm very another overrated movie. Uh, is it one of the worst? No. And there's a lot worse movies on the list that I've already said. And I'm going to say Lighthouse is maybe one of the little better ones of the overrated list. But still, I don't see the hype for this movie at all. Now we're getting into a lot of controversy with my top four. Number four, I'm going with Us. I am just not on this Jordan Peele train of horror stuff. Twilight Zone, Too Woke. And same with these two movies. Or did he like... His horror movies are so woke -ness -ness It's just ridiculous. It's pretentious. It's asinine. It's eye-rolling. It's not scary. It just makes me just cringe on a lot of stuff. Like, Get Out was okay. I mean, you could say that's more of his Twilight Zone ones, but it still was just like, I don't understand that scene. And same with Us. Just wasn't a fan of it. Very overrated. Very overhyped. And I know a lot of friends, too, who actually like, I can't believe I spent money to see this piece of shit movie. Like, I know a friend on Facebook that said that, like, this is not a good movie. Like, why is it getting that much hype? I think it's because Jordan Peele directed it. People are have the ones that's kind of like with Michael Bay directing something and with someone else directing. Like, when they see who's directing it or what the theme of the movie is, they automatically go in thinking one thing. And that needs to stop because that is what you call being biased and not being critically sufficient of already going in with a bias number three another one that is on a lot of people's top five list but for me it was just underwhelming boring and unrealistic for what i've seen in life the farewell yeah i understand how people can enjoy this movie and i do think the grandma deserves an oscar nomination for sure out of everything in this movie she deserves an oscar i'm not aquafina to me she was played a sad sappy girl who uh, like she played that character it's like anyone could play that character there are some good scenes but i just think it's funny that this comes out and they're like it almost feel like a pro-china movie an anti-american movie on some levels but then it comes out and the hong kong protest is happening so i think that's also kind of funny as well but the farewell it felt too mushy for me it was slow pacing it's not a 99 percent on rotten tomato positive no way it should be a 99 percent maybe it's at 98 but it's very high up there. I've seen it before. I don't know why people think it's that much better of a movie. Like I said, it could just be my personal preference of what happened to me in real life. And then watching this movie, and I just didn't feel it at all. Like, no emotional connection at all. Like, not even on the verge of tears. Like, I've cried during some other movies this year. This one, I was just like... Number two. Captain Marvel. Wow, this does not need to be a positive movie, guys. I'm going to bring up Michael Bay again because he's going to make my uh, most underrated movie list. And you know which one that is. Captain Marvel. You cannot say the last battle sequence. You can know what's happening. Oh, Michael Bay made a movie. The Transformers one. You just don't know what's happening. But then you watch Captain Marvel and you understand what exactly is happening at that last action sequence in a spaceship. No, you don't. It's dark. The battle sequence is way too many jump cuts in the movie. At least you know Michael Bay. There is a mix of realism and CGI. This was 100% CGI. Brie Larson had a stunt double for a butt. For a butt. She had a stunt double. And don't come at me with the, oh, it's a girl power movie, so that's why I like it. No. My mom's a lady, a girl, whatever you want to call it. She hated it. She did not like it at all. She rewatched it. And then the choices of Fury losing his eye how they came up with the Avengers and Captain Marvel just Brie Larson did not play the character well and then the the soundtrack to me was cringeworthy I'm sorry you don't 
have to push his agenda to make a good girl power movie. You have this example, you have Black Christmas. They're not good movies, but then you have decent ones out there that have girls in it recently. Like Atomic Blonde is way better than any of the other movies I've said. And I'm pretty sure I can go through a list of stuff that's like, that's a badass chick, that's a badass chick, that's a badass lady, that's a badass woman. No, Captain Marvel, the directing was boring, the color palette was boring, there's maybe two good jokes in this movie. It is not a good Marvel movie. This might be one of the worst ones. This, Iron Man 3, and maybe one more. Those are the bottom three Marvel movies, hands down. And if you've been watching my reviews recently, you will know what my number one is. It is a Netflix movie called Perfection. This movie has like a 70-something on Rotten Tomatoes. So it's not like fantastic in the 80s and 90s. It's kind of like the okay, you know, the middle of the road, fresh. This movie is fucking garbage. There was no redeeming factors in the perfection. Zero. The ending was human centipede-like. <laughs> the acting made no sense. The tones made no sense. The direction made no sense. The reason to do stuff in this movie made no sense. The twists and turns made no sense at all of what they're doing because of a tattoo. Like, what the? Like, no. The perfection was garbage. Like, this should not even, this should be in the 20s. The 20s. If it was in the 20s, I'd be like, okay, understandable. But you're in the 70s. And this is another one of the movies where I think the theme made critics like it more. You need to stop thinking about the wokeness of a movie or the themes of a movie. Is it a good movie? Yes or no? We need to start getting to that category, people. There we go. That is my overrated movies of 2019. I know this is probably going to get a lot of thumbs down in the thumbs up and down section of YouTube. But if you give it a thumbs down, tell me why you think some of these movies are not overrated or which ones are overrated or why I'm correct with some of these movies or how you could see yes or no with some of these movies. But like I said, check out the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. One of the things, Blue Futon Topi, Blue Futonians. Thank you for watching and have a great day. And now let's do the underrated, the underdog movies. <laughs>